You play to win the game. Hello? You play to win the game. You don't play to just play it. That's the great thing about sports. You play to win. And I don't care if you don't have any wins. You go play to win. When you start telling me it doesn't matter, then retire. Get out. Because it matters. Well, good evening, good people. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great evening. Um, I'm just kind of playing around a little bit here with my studio set because I've actually got a couple of cameras and things in here. And I'm checking out the Wi-Fi connectivity of those cameras to make sure they're all working really good in here so that way will be able to do all kinds of good stuff. So you see I'm changing to another camera. That's a little bit closer here to you guys. Now, I didn't just come here just to play with the studio set and, and just kind of, you know, have some fun here, although this is some fun. I actually have a take because so many people will tell me that I'm an idiot, that Dak just is not the one. I am wasting my time. I'm wasting the Cowboys' time. It's time to move on. Okay, I, I understand your point. I mean, I have lost friends. I have lost followers. Um, I get hate mail from people, you know, that say that I'm swinging from, you know what, you know, I'm kissing his behind, you know, I must be getting paid by DAC or I must work for DAC or something like that. And I understand everybody's frustration of not winning Super Bowls. Okay, I, believe me, nobody wants to see the Cowboys in Super Bowl more than me. I, but trust me, that is a fact. My thing is, is I worry that we go through and we just say, just get rid of that guy and we can just grab somebody else. But it's not that easy. Just, just humor me for a second here. Just understand, we were blessed with Troy Aikman and an incredible team. Number one defense, Hall of Famers all over the place. You know, uh, uh, Hall of Fame, Larry Allen, offensive lineman. Hall of Fame, running back, you know, uh, Emmitt Smith. Hall of Fame, wide receiver, Michael Irvin, and of course, Troy Aikman himself. But understand, after Troy Aikman, we went through all kinds of hell. From 2000, just listen to this. 2000 season, we started out with Troy. We had Randall Cunningham, Anthony Wright. 2001, Quincy Carter, Anthony Wright, Ryan Leaf, you know, biggest bust in the history of NFL, Clint Stoner, Chad Hutchison, Quincy Carter, Vinny Tessaverde, Drew Henson, Drew Bledsoe, and then finally, we found Tony Romo. The Cowboys got lucky finding Tony Romo, and I dare say they were lucky finding Dak Prescott. My problem is not moving on from Dak Prescott, it's moving on without another plan. That's the problem because people for some reason just think it's easy just to get a quarterback. That, hey, you know, get rid of this bum, we'll bring in somebody else and we'll be great. But it doesn't really work out that way. It's hard to find a quarterback. Let me give you a modern example here because here's, here's my theory. I'm going to say that we've seen this happen recently, and we can compare real numbers. The commanders of 2016 said, you know, after franchise tagging Kirk Cousins twice, man, we could do better than that. We're going to get rid of Kirk Cousins because we don't think he's the guy, right? So be careful what you wish for. Now, now just humor me for a second. Kirk Cousins has basically played almost every game in Minnesota, hasn't been hurt. During his time as a starting quarterback from 2017 to this weekend, Kirk Cousins has 166 touchdowns to 59 interceptions, 22,432 yards, and a 67.7% completion percentage. Now, Washington, they figured we can get anybody better than Kirk Cousins. In fact, we know we can, because let's go through the list here for a second. The list since 
Kirk Cousins was left. Okay. Alex Smith. They thought Alex Smith was going to be the guy. Gave him a three-year, $73 million deal. Messed up his leg. Kind of like what the Jets did when they went for Aaron Rodgers. Now, Aaron Rodgers says he'll be back, but at his age, Achilles tendon, you don't know if he's going to be the guy. You don't know if Robert Sala is going to make it through this season without him. Things could change. So they went from Alex Smith to Josh Johnson, Colt McCoy, and butt fumble Mark Sanchez. The next year, Case Keenum, they drafted with the number one pick, Dwayne Haskins, and they also had Colt McCoy play. Alex Smith came back to play a few games. Dwayne Haskin, Kyle Allen. After that, Tyler Heineke, Ryan Fitzpatrick, Garrett Gilbert. They went out, they traded for Carson Wentz. And they also got Sam Howe. So Washington figured, we're better off without Kirk Cousins. If we take what Washington got from all of those quarterbacks, all of those quarterbacks that they brought in, and I should have actually figured out how much money they paid him, but that would have taken too much work. They got 21,126 yards, 1,300 yards less. Not a whole lot. Okay. You still got a lot of passing yards. They got 128 touchdown passes. Kirk Cousins had 38 more. 38 more. Interceptions, which we learned because when Dak Prescott was making them, that they're difference makers, so you don't want to make interceptions. They had almost as many interceptions as they had touchdown passes. 94. 128 TDs, 94 interceptions. Compared to Kirk Cousins, 59. So I dare say, in retrospect, and I'm not saying that Kirk Cousins is the best option, but I think Kirk Cousins gets a bad rap that's not necessarily correct. Kirk Cousins, everybody says, well, you know, he sucks in primetime. You know, he's like basically 500 in primetime. Compared to Daniel Jones, which is like 1 in 12 or 1 in 13, something like that. He, that that's really suckage. Kirk Cousins is a good quarterback. Kirk Cousins makes receivers great because every receiver that's been with him has blown up. You look at the receivers that he had in Washington that people thought were the real deal. Kirk Cousins goes, they go down the toilet never to be seen from again. So when you look at that, if Washington had Kirk Cousins last year instead of Carson Wentz, just from the lack of interceptions that he throws, they're a playoff team last year. They just are. They would have been stable at quarterback because the guy hasn't been injured. They would have been able to work with the same guy as opposed to, let's see, how many was that? Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 10, 11, 12, 13. <laughs> Lucky 13. 13 different guys. 13 different guys that you had to coach up. 13 different guys that you had to put into the lineup. And in the end, not that I'm saying they would have won a Super Bowl, but I bet you some of those years they would have been playoff teams or at least had more fans in the stands. So now, let's go back to the Cowboys in our situation. People just say, get to the end of the year, just get rid of them. Okay, you know what? I, I hear, I hear your, your thoughts on this. And you can do that and take about a $35 million cap hit. So you can only cut him. You can't trade him. Because we've seen this situation where the Raiders said to Derek Carr, because we don't want to pay you, Find a team to trade with. You go out, you talk to them, you make a deal, we'll get a draft pick and we'll let you go. He found the team, the Saints. And he said, I'm not releasing my no trade clause. You can cut me or you can pay me. 
or you can pay me and cut me. In which case, they ended up cutting him, taking the cap hit, and getting no compensation. Cowboys can do the exact same thing. They can do that. And just take a $35 million cap hit for next year. Yeah, that, that does save them, you know, $34 million, or, or excuse me, $24 million of money that they would pay him. But now you have to say, Cooper Rush, are you my quarterback? Or Trey Lance, are you my quarterback? And if you're looking at Trey Lance, you're probably looking at a lot of growing pains for him to fit your system and to see if he's actually going to be able to play because of the lack of time. You can go to Cooper Rush, which would make Skip Bayless happy as could be, and I saw today that Cooper Rush was trending, but I'm not sure that Cooper Rush is going to uh, – Cooper Rush wasn't going to beat you against San Francisco. Cooper Rush is not getting you to the Super Bowl. Of course, people will say, well, just draft a guy. Well, the 49ers took three number ones to move him because we'll be somewhere in the 20s. You're not – grabbing the franchise quarter sometimes teams get lucky and they find one like we did with Dak and Jalen Hurst but there's no guarantee on that and if you're betting the whole franchise saying you know we're going to get a quarterback late in the first round or the second the third or the fourth round and we're going to be good that doesn't happen that often yes it did for us with Dak one time but we went through a lot of guys that we thought were the ones and as far as the Cowboys picking quarterbacks when you think about Jerry wanting Johnny Manziel and Paxton Lynch and Connor Cook, you want to ask, do you really want those guys drafting your quarterback, your next one? So that route is a possibility, but you may have to give up three number ones to be in a position to draft one of the top ones like you did with Troy Aikman. You could do that. But you can look at it and say the Cowboys, one of the few things that they really do well is drafting quarter. I mean, drafting players, typically. Not, not every time. We'll see how this year works out. But first-round picks are usually pretty good. So, do you want to give up the possibility of a CeeDee Lamb, a Mozzie Smith, um, Micah Parsons? That's three number ones. So you take your number ones, you get your quarterback, but if you ain't got the line and the receivers and the people to go around him, he's going to fail. So I understand everybody's frustration. I understand everybody's anger. Nobody, including me, wants to see the Cowboys go out and look like they did. But we had problems across the board. Across the board. Brandon Cooks. He's not getting it done right now. C.D. Lamb, not looking like a number one. Tony Pollard, he's not a young Zeke. Jake Ferguson, he's not Jason Witten yet. Our offensive line, not the great wall of Dallas. Our defense, not quite the doomsday defense or the 85 Bears. Now, these are all areas that we can improve in that will help the bottom line, which is winning. That's my whole point. If you have a plan, if you have a plan that you can devise that's going to get us a quarterback because free agency, you, know, you can get Kirk Cousins maybe at the end of this year. You might be able to get Jimmy G at the end of this year. Carson Wentz is still out there. Maybe you can get Matty Ice out of retirement. But there's not a lot of options at quarterback. That's all I'm saying. And if somebody can come up with a better plan, by all means, bring it on. All right, good people. Um, I appreciate you guys. And hopefully we will do better on Monday night. I hope you're all having a great hump day. And um, some of y'all need this. Okay. Woo. Okay. Well, we're definitely going to have some reactions to all of this with you guys. Um, I, I can see that um, we're going to have to get him a lollipop or something because he is definitely pissed off. But 
I'm not going to say that he's got to be all pro 